Okay, let's go ahead and get started. Welcome again and thank you for joining our Fit for Learning webinar today. And as you can see on the screen here, we're gonna be talking today about estate planning. And I think over the years, I think the topic of estate planning is, is one of the most frequently requested topics that, that we receive from employers, from employees. And so we wanted to make sure and, and take an opportunity to talk to all of you about that today. And as our title of today's webinar implies, estate planning is something that's for everyone. And that is a really important point of, of what we're gonna be sharing with all of you today is that we're gonna share some different tips and actions that each one of you are going to be able to take today as you start to put together your own estate plan. And I know when we hear the words estate planning, you know, a lot of times we go to this idea of, oh, I can't plan for death, this is scary. Um, there's a lot of lawyers and legalese, and, and really it doesn't have to be as complicated as you might think. And again, we're gonna kind of walk you through what the estate planning process is going to look like. And also, when you really think about estate planning, it really is one of the most loving and caring things that you can do for all of your loved ones that, that are involved and part of your estate. And so with that, we're gonna go ahead and uh, do a quick introduction. My name is Kyle Bingham. I'm the Managing Director with Financial Fitness for Life. Joining us today are Kenji Noguchi and Heath Hagen. And uh, here's a look at what we want to cover today. We're gonna start first by talking about some estate planning basics. We're gonna talk about what estate planning is, how it works. Then we're gonna get into the question of, do I even need an estate plan? When's the best time to start one? And is an estate plan something that you're gonna be able to do on your own? And then we're gonna get into some of the most common estate planning tools that, that the large majority of individuals are gonna be using as a part of their estate plan. Then we'll get more into some of these tips and tricks that, that many of you are gonna be able to use. We're gonna talk about the different types of assets that you need to be thinking about when you are building that, that plan. We're gonna talk about probate. That, that's another really common topic that comes up with the idea of estate planning. We're gonna walk you through what that is and how it works. And then lastly, we're gonna talk a little bit about trusts, what they are, how they work, and whether or not all of you might need to evaluate whether or not one might make sense for you in your situation. And with that, we're gonna go ahead and start with some estate planning basics. And I'm gonna bring Keith Hagen on for just a couple of moments. And so Keith, why don't you start us out with this first question? So what is estate planning and how does that process work? Yeah, thanks Kyle. And thanks for all you guys for, uh, for hopping on. It just shows just kind of your commitment to your financial health. So we uh, hope that just the next few minutes um, will be educational and helpful for you. Um, so I'll start off with just a basic definition. Um, as you can see here, estate planning is a process of making arrangements and decisions regarding your assets uh, and personal affairs in the event of your death or incapacity. So, you know, I think this is one of the most overlooked and, and critical aspects in personal finance. Um, you can think of an estate plan as, as like a well-defined roadmap that, that outlines, you know, who should inherit your assets and when um, how should your medical care be managed and, and who should make financial decisions on your behalf. So uh, one of the reasons I feel like that people don't start an estate plan is, is kind of like Kyle said, you know, maybe scared to think that far down the road or, or, or to think about death. But, um, but I think another one is just the perceived complexity of, of, of it all. And so hopefully by the end of this, you'll have enough clarity to kind of break through those perceptions and be confident in taking some of those initial steps. So. Um, there is a common theme to pick up throughout um, these next questions and just really the webinar today. Um, so let's just see if you can kind of pick up on what on what we're putting down. So uh, the first thing we'll talk about here uh, is what um, what do you own and who gets it um, after you're gone. So creating an estate plan puts you in charge um, after uh, after you pass away or making sure that your possessions, your money. Uh, get past to the people or the places that you want. And I like to call this like living from the grave. Like you, uh, you create the legal documents, um, you know, like wills or trust to make sure that your wishes are followed. Um, number two here is who will make decisions on your behalf if you're unable to do so. Uh, one misconception of estate planning is that, is that it starts working after you pass away. Uh, if you think about it, there's sometimes uh, people make 
are unable to make decisions for themselves due to illnesses or accidents. Uh, and these could be temporary or permanent. So uh, to make sure that you're still in control of those decisions, you know, any decisions, business or financial, medical, et cetera, like while you're um, in like an incapacitated state, um, you know, you could choose someone that you trust, like a friend or a, a family member to make these decisions and make sure you're getting the right care and assistance. Uh, number three here is who will take care of your children if you lo no longer can. So uh, we'll get into this a little bit in just a second. But if you do have children or your guardians um, of some, some other children, like what uh, you want to make sure that they're safe, that they're cared for, you know, even if you can't be there for them. So creating an estate plan will allow you to make sure that they go to someone that you trust uh, who will love them well and raise them in the way that you would. And the last one here, how... Uh, do you want to be taken care of if you can't take care of yourself? So this this comes into play again if you're incapacitated. This uh, is dealing, you know, decisions about your health. Um, and so, you know, it might sound like a broken record here, but but you get to choose who will make those decisions for you. Um, and you can lay out, you know, what exact preferences that you want for medical treatment um, and just other end of life decisions. Uh, you know, I, I read a statistic the other day that that says 25% of people will become incapacitated in their lifetime. So if you didn't pick up on what I was saying there, the common theme here is, is you are in control. Like if you created a, a, an estate plan, like you are in control. So if you did have that correct and follow me right, you can reach out to Kenji later and he might send you a Christmas gift. All right, excellent. Thank you, Keith. And so now, now that we kind of have a little bit of a better understanding of what estate planning is and, and those questions that, that you're trying to answer for yourself, let's talk a little bit more about whether or not you actually need an estate plan. And then to kind of follow up on that, when's the best time to create one? And are you okay going about it alone or should you seek out some assistance with your estate plan? Sure. Uh, really good question. So we're going to break those down kind of one at a time. So the first one is, do I need an estate plan? And the short answer is yes. Um, you know, I could say next question here, but uh, but for real, like getting creating an estate plan applies to all of us. And, and Kyle mentioned it before, like depend, it doesn't matter how old you are, what your background is, how much money you make or assets that you have. So some reasons why uh, that you should have an estate plan, I'm gonna you know, just list a few of these for you. So if you own any property, so when you're gone, anything that you own, that you've purchased, that you have, houses, vehicles, bank accounts, investments, other assets, like all those things that you spent your hard earned money on are going to go somewhere, whether or not you have an estate plan written out or not. So um, again, staying with the common theme of today, you decide where those things are gonna go. Uh, secondly, is dependents. And again, this one's a big one for me. And honestly, is the reason why I got my estate plan created. Um, I have five beautiful children and our house is crazy all the time. And so if you're like me, there is no way that I'm going to let uh, or leave it up to a judge in a court to make the final decision on who's going to raise my children. Um, so I want to make sure um, that, that I have something in place um, that are very clear on where my children or who my children are going to go to if something happens to me. Um, you know, three, just for your healthcare wishes. wishes. So again, 25% of Americans will become incapacitated. So uh, if you would like to have any say in your medical treatment, you know, again, creating that estate plan is going to be what you need to do uh, in order to, 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 to let people know like what you want in, in the life decisions. So um, a lot of times, um, this goes to family members, but I have known other um, some people to choose someone outside the family because uh, if something's happening to you or you're incapacitated, like that's a really hard emotional time for you and your family to go through. And so having someone that's kind of outside of that just a little bit, but someone that you also trust is a good name that you might want to keep in mind for that. Uh, and, and number four here is minimizing any family conflicts. So you don't have to go too far on the internet to find some crazy stories about families fighting over properties in estates. Um, I mean, it could be as little as grandma's napkin from, you know, 1920 that people are trying to get a hold of. But, uh, you know, having estate plans prevent uh, those disputes about any asset distribution from ever starting. Um, 
you know, and I like to say this is this is a good thing for anyone who has a crazy family. But to be honest, we all have a crazy family in some capacity. So, um, you know, we all know of that second cousin twice removed on your mother's side. And you don't want that person coming in and sweeping up any of your things that, that you don't want to go to them. Um, lastly, uh, tax and legal benefits. I'm not going to get too far to weeds here, but, um, you know, you can structure assets within an estate plan to help minimize those estate and inheritance taxes and potentially save money for you and your heirs. Um, so now that I've convinced all of you to start an estate plan and that you need one, so uh, when do you need to start one? Best answer is yesterday. Um, but again, in all seriousness, life is unpredictable. And, and again, you think of people that you know uh, that have suddenly become ill or passed away and just completely out of the blue. So if you're honest with yourself, like are you ready if something happened to you? Uh, you know, as mentioned before, it's not a matter of age or background or income or size of your estate. Just, you know, we just know that a state is is a living, breathing thing. So getting started now, like as your major life events, life events occur, marriage, um, the, you know, birth of children, just, you know, purchase of uh, assets over time, like you can change your plan over time. Uh, and then the last question here is, is can you do it on your own? Um, you know, some aspects of estate planning can be done without professional help. Um, if you want to hop on the internet and, and just get a will started, um, you know, get your beneficiaries in line and fill out like a basic power of attorney. Like, sure, you can you can do that on your own. Um, pros and cons to that for sure. Um, definitely would recommend that that consulting an experienced estate planning attorney is a wise decision to do. You know, even if you initially go and just lay out your specific situation and family dynamic and things like that, they can kind of help you guide um, to the correct plan. So, again, they're professionals in that field and they're, uh, they can ensure that your plan is legally sound and, and kind of tailored for your specific needs. Excellent. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Heath, for kind of walking through that. And I think that those are some important considerations to, to be thinking about um, in your own lives as you you know, determine kind of the, the priority of getting that estate plan put together and, and the things you need to be thinking about. So now just really quickly here, Keith, I know we don't want to get in the weeds today, but there are definitely some common estate planning tools. And can you just kind of walk us through what these tools are and, and a little bit about when when they become applicable and how they help you to kind of answer the questions that you talked about earlier? Sure, sure. Uh, and so, yeah, these four things here are kind of the kind of the basic foundation that you would have, like that you'd walk through um, when you start an estate plan. So just the last will and testament is also known as a will, uh, kind of the most basic form of estate planning. Uh, in some states, a, a will could be literally written on a napkin, signed by somebody who's there, and it's a valid will. So like there's there, it's pretty simple, but at least get something started. Um, but like, I don't recommend that just just for the record there. So anyway, it details your your wishes, specifically those regarding the distribution of your assets um, and care for any minors that you're responsible for. So um, there are limitations to wills. They can be contested, um, you know, and some, you know, some people choose to take a step further and kind of create a trust, which Kenji will get into in a minute. Um, and that kind of gets through some of those limitations. Um, but I do want to ask the question uh, that I kind of uh, referenced earlier is, is uh, what happens if you don't have a will? You know, ultimately the final decision will rest on a judge in a probate court. Um, and so, you know, this can be a really scary thought, uh, again, for me, especially if you have like dependents that, that, that would go somewhere that you may or may not want them to. Uh, second here is a living will. This just outlines your preferences for medical treatment. Uh, in the event that you're unable to communicate. So, um, you know, typically addresses end of life decisions and life sustaining medical interventions, um, ensuring that your health care uh, wishes are respected. Um, and then the last two things, there's two different types of powers of attorney here, uh, financial and medical situations. So with the financial power of attorney, uh, you're designated someone to make those financial decisions and manage your finances, financial affairs on your behalf. Uh, and if you become uh, incapacitated or unable to handle those matters. So again, think of it as, I mean, as simply um, who's going to be responsible for for paying your mortgage, paying your bills, um, 
you know, all the way up to handling like some of your more complicated investments or selling of large assets and things like that. Um, and then the medical power of attorney is just the person um, that you designate to make uh, healthcare decisions on your behalf. Um, and again, these legal, legal documents are essential components of estate planning. Uh, there are more in-depth things that you can get into, um, you know, each serving specific roles and protecting your interest and ensuring your preferences are followed. So again, take some time uh, to see if creating an estate plan is right for you and your family. Excellent. Great. Th thank you, Heath. And, and again, I agree that, that these tools can be a starting point to kind of start to, to build that foundation for yourself. So now what we'd like to do is transition into talking a little bit more about some specific tips that we think can help you to start to take some steps forward <clears throat> with that estate plan. And so Kenji, why don't you go ahead and walk us through this question here? So what type of assets are we talking about when we're talking about our, our estate plan? And, and which ones are the ones that we wanna be including in that plan? It's a valid question. And, you know, I think this is what everyone wants to really know, right? It's, well, think of it this way. It's everything that you own. So we'll kind of start and think about it in two buckets, right? We have our intangible assets and then we'll have our tangible assets. So intangible, right? Anything that you might be able to add a beneficiary designation to. So, right, maybe those checking and savings accounts, your retirement account, you know, maybe those life insurance policies, your business plans, et cetera. Again, it's a, a good healthy reminder for you if you're listening today, just to double check, are my beneficiaries aligned? And I think that's a starting point for a lot of folks. So I always personally think of the intangible assets as electronic, if you would. Um, but then we also have our tangible assets, right? Anything that's physical, maybe that you can't add that beneficiary designation to. So homes, vehicles, toys, right? Maybe family heirlooms, um, you name it. So really think about those things and understand that all of them are gonna be included in your estate. So when you're maybe adding beneficiaries or thinking of drafting a will, really think of those tangible assets. And one more thing that I might add is gonna be those digital assets, right? Think about your usernames, your passwords, your logins. And you know what we always suggest is maybe having a secure document or location with those. So maybe if something does happen to you, your inheritors have that access, right? That's one of the best gifts that you can really give. And I know most people nowadays uh, really do have a lot of those digital assets on hand. So think about those things as you move forward. Excellent, great. Yeah, the digital assets, I think more so than ever in this digital world that we're living in is there's there's a lot of stuff out there that goes beyond just the tangible. And so that that's a good reminder as, as you start to inventory all, all of your individual assets. Now, you know, we're gonna talk about probate and for a little bit. Keith mentioned it. So Kenji, walk us through, what is probate? Um, how does it work? And what are some of these assets that we just talked about? What, what type of assets are going through probate? Let's think simply here, right? In, in probate, it's gonna be that legal process that your estate goes through after you pass away. And really during this time, right, the court's gonna start to process the distribution of your estate. But first, they're gonna prove the validity of your will. They're gonna ensure that it's executed uh, accordingly and properly. And then very nextly, right, they're going to ensure that if you have any leftover debts, they want to pay those first. And whatever's remaining is going to go then distributed to your heirs. So really, that's how that process in general is going to work. And, you know, again, all the assets of your estate are going to go through probate. Now, if you have a beneficiary on them, they go direct to your beneficiary and you can actually avoid that probate. So they won't be at risk if they have beneficiaries. But think about, again, all those other tangible assets, maybe those other things that you forgot to add a beneficiary to, they are gonna go through probate. And generally I would say, you know, a probate, a modest estate, it's gonna take six months to maybe even two years to get through the entire process. So think about that just for a moment, right? And, you know, what if you pass away and, you know, maybe, maybe your partner needs that money now to pay the bills or survive to continue living on? It could really become a hot mess. So think about that, you know, again, adding those beneficiaries to go direct and immediate and maybe any of those other assets thereafter uh, to make a game plan via that will. Excellent. Yeah. And and I think you you hit the nail on the head with a couple things with probate, right, is that it takes a lot of time. Um, it can definitely be expensive and it's going to delay essentially seeing your, your wishes met. Right. There's certain things that you want to have happen 
with your assets and, and you don't want those to be tied up in probate. And another big point about probate too, um, it's public. And, and I think for, for many of us, we like to keep financial matters and, and, and assets and things like that private. And so probate is public. So others would be able to, um, you know, essentially see those assets and, and know of them. And so valuing privacy is, is something that we're going to talk about right now that if you want to try to avoid probate or if you've looked at your estate plan and you've asked yourself, well, do I need a trust? What is a trust? I'm going to have Kenji kind of walk us through that, that process right now and how that changes what happens with the probate process. You're right, right? Probate, is, it's public. So anyone can see and see into your matters in your daily life. So, you know, a living trust is a great estate planning tool um, that you can use to avoid some of that. And really, as defined as it, it's a legal arrangement established by an individual called the grantor during their lifetime to protect their assets and direct the distribution after their death. So really, again, right, when we think about probate, does it have a beneficiary, right? Maybe you put some of these tangible assets into the trust and make that trust as a beneficiary or even your electronic accounts, right? You can make that trust so it can actually go direct to the trust and be protected from seeing in the public eye. Nextly, right, when we think about a, a living trust, right, and you know, can it reduce those legal fees? Well, I'll tell you this, right? Generally, an attorney, they might range from $1,000 to $2,000, depending on how complex your situation is or how unique you want it to be. And let's paint the picture, right? Let's say about $2,000 for an attorney. If you don't have an estate plan in place, probate attorneys are going to generally cost you about 3 to 5% of your estate. So I'll just give you a simple example. Let's say you have an estate worth $500,000. You know, that probate cost might range from twenty to thirty thousand dollars all in. So that two thousand uh, to just to have these things set up properly with an attorney while you have the choice uh, could be a good payoff, right? Compared to that twenty, thirty thousand dollars down the road affecting affecting the value of your estate. And really I, I think that's a big thing for a lot of people, it's just valuing valuing that privacy. And you know, as, as Heath had said earlier, you have power beyond the grave. I always like to think about the will is who gets what. A trust might be how they get it. So really think about that, right? Where when you're setting up terms of a trust, you know, while you're living, you can always change the terms of that trust and, and uh, make stipulations. And generally a lot of people will make time-based stipulations. Maybe they don't want inheritors to receive it all at once. Uh, maybe it's age requirement. Maybe you want them to reach a certain age. And, you know, you can really have uh, unique scenarios where you could even say, hey, I want my inheritor uh, to do 10 jumping jacks and 20 push-ups before they actually receive the assets there. So again, make it your own. And they're really going to become helpful in deciding of, you know, who gets what and how. And keep in mind, right, a living trust, it only becomes irrevocable once you as a grantor actually uh, becomes incapacitated or dies. So at that point, the terms of the trust cannot be changed or revoked going forward. So again, right, it's a great tool to ensure that, you know, the assets are distributed according to your wishes and also protecting you and your family, maybe from the public eye. Excellent, yeah, thank, thank you, Kenji, for kind of walking through that. So th this is a, a common question that we get for those people that do have a will and are evaluating the idea of a trust. And so a trust will avoid probate, you're more than likely going to save money on legal fees and, and other, other related expenses to your estate. It's private and you definitely have more control and you can specify um, more particularly the, the different ways that you would want your wealth distributed. All right, so wh what do we do next? Because again, there's, there's so many different layers to estate planning and I think what we've laid out here are four action steps that that we all collectively think can really help you to get the ball rolling with your estate plan if you don't have one this can also be a great reminder to go back and revisit the existing plan that you have first and foremost start these conversations now while times are good while you and anyone else in your family is healthy start to communicate about your wishes your desires and continue to have that ongoing dialogue because some of these decisions that you are going to make 
are probably some of the most important decisions you'll ever make. And so we need to make sure that we're kind of trying to foster a, an environment where we're open about it, we talk about it. And as I mentioned at the onset of our presentation here, it really is one of the most loving, thoughtful, caring things that, that you can do because at the end of the day, when when we all pass away, the last thing that, that we wanna have happening is this turmoil and this conflict within our family. We wanna be able to pass along peace and that's what your estate plan is going to be able to do. Number two, take some time to inventory all of those assets that you have, the tangible, the intangible, the digital assets, so that you can start to think about, okay, here's what I have, here's what I'd like to do with these assets, here's who I would like to receive these assets, and then also being mindful of any of the outstanding debts that you have, because as Kenji mentioned, that's going to be taken out of your estate to settle all of those debts before the remaining assets go on to the beneficiaries. Number three, determine what your goals and wishes are, right? And this is something that, that is going to be more dynamic. It's going to change over time. So just like we're talking about needing an estate plan, just like financial planning, your estate plan is something that you need to revisit somewhat frequently as your needs change, as your life changes, okay? What do you want to achieve with the estate planning that you do? What are some of the unique needs that, that your family has and has that been reflected in the plan that you've created? And then the fourth point here is to start to identify some of those different legal documents that you need and how to go about getting those put together, right? And again, Kenji mentioned beneficiary designations. This is something that every one of you right now can go and double check. Have you already assigned beneficiaries on things like life insurance policies, your retirement plans at work? If you haven't done that, that's a real easy first step that you can take. Or maybe if you have, maybe you're sitting here being like, man, I just don't remember what my beneficiary designations are. You know, make a reminder for yourself to go in and check that out. And then lastly, have a place to store all of these documents, okay? you need to have somebody that you can trust with all of this information and to have that in a secure place so again so in the event that something does happen to you everything that we've talked about today is spelled out and you have a person that you've essentially identified that would be able to access all of this information and and make sure that all of your wishes are met with your estate and of course, as all of you know, we are here to be able to kind of help to navigate you through this idea of estate planning and just help you to start to look at steps that you can take, help you to start to understand the different decisions that you want to make. And so feel free, um, you can scan the QR code on your screen right there, um, set a few moments to sit down with one of our consultants. Again, there's no cost to do that, so feel free to do it. Um, at, at any point in time. And uh, just as a quick reminder, is we are gonna be talking about the five biggest risks to planning for retirement um, in November. So be sure if you haven't signed up for that already, take a second here and scan that QR code and get signed up for that. Uh, last thing I'll say is keep an eye out for an email from us. We're gonna be sending you a copy of this recording so you'll be able to access this. Um, you'll be able to access our contact information if you'd like to follow up. And uh, other than that, I just want to thank you all for taking a few moments out of your day to be here. Best of luck as you start to create that estate plan. And uh, we're here to help in any ways that we can. Thanks and have a wonderful rest of your day. Bye-bye.